Hi, my name is Jacob. I'm a software engineer at Meta. In the previous video, I showed you how you can create a chat GPT for your own data with Langchain and OpenAI APIs. Uh, link to the video in the description. In this video, I want to show you alternative solution. So using OpenAI APIs is pretty expensive. Depending on how large your document is, you can quickly utilize the free $5 limit. Uh, so for example, running 1,000 queries on a document with uh, around 3,000 words would cost you about $7. Uh, to learn more about pricing, uh, check OpenAI API pricing calculator. I also uh, dropped the link in the description. And you can learn more how much OpenAI API can cost you. So if you don't want to pay for OpenAI API, you can use one of the open source large language models locally. Unfortunately, OpenAI models are not open source, but there are a lot of open source models that you can find on Hugging Face. I uh, also dropped the link in the description. And uh, with these models, you can build a solution with Langchain, similarly how uh, we did in the previous video, and actually, Ivan Martinez created an awesome GitHub repo called Private GPT that allows you to do that. It uses a sentence transformers Python package uh, to create embeddings, and it uses one of the open source embedding models. And it's also using one of the GPT for all compatible LLMs, which you can find on uh, Hugging Face, and it also uses a uh, Langchain. So. Without further ado, let me show you how you can uh, build similar solution to what we built in the previous video. Okay, so the first uh, step is to go to GitHub and to find the uh, private GPT there. There is a link in my blog post and there's also a link in the description to this video. And I'm just gonna clone it. I'm just gonna copy this. And I'll go to my console. Uh, I'll actually go to my dev directory. I'll, I'll make separate directory, uh, private chat GPT. And I'll clone this repo here. And when it's uh, cloning, I will now open uh, VS Code. Okay. So now uh, we can open README here, which uh, explain step by step what to do. So the first step is to install required packages. You can find what packages has to be installed in the requirements.txt file. We go here, you can see uh, these are all the packages that um, you need in order to run the private GPT. So I already uh, did that step, so I, I won't do it, but you can just copy this and paste to your console and uh, this will install the packages. So the second step is to download LLM model and put it in some directory that later on you will point to it. So I actually already downloaded two models. So there's one default, this uh, BGML GPT for all model, but I also downloaded one that performed a little bit better. Uh, I think I have them in my downloads models directory. Yeah, so I, I have this GGML GPT for all, which is the default model from private GPT. And I also have nouns Hermes, which perform uh, much better. And uh, actually this uh, Hermes model is a little bit bigger. So you can see here that uh, this one is 7.3, this one is 3.7. So it's almost twice as big. Um, so let me just copy this over. So I'm gonna copy downloads models. Uh, actually, first I need to make a directory. So let me go to private GPT. I'll create a directory called models. And now I'll just copy it. Models uh, to models. So this will take a while because um, I'm moving over uh, over 10 gigabytes of data. Um, so then when I have my models, now I just need to configure the paths. So 
again, I can copy this. I need to copy the example env file and uh, you can look here. Uh, close this. And actually, actually, what I can do here is I can just remove this. I can rename it. So that will do. So this is setting up uh, this directory. So this is where my embeddings will be stored because first step in creating this solution as um, you learned in the previous video is I need to create a vector representation of my documents. So I will create the embeddings using the vector database and they will be pers persist in this directory. So I'll, I chose directory db and the model types dbt for all and the path for model is models slash ggml. So you see my models are being copying over. So I'll start with the defaults and uh, I'll also use uh, the default embedding model. So now that's pretty much it. Uh, let me go to preview of README. And now uh, I have here source document have a state of the union transcript. Um, so I, I'll make it like a little bit more fun. So I think I have on the desktop about md file which is about me so i'll just copy it over to source document and i'll use that file i'll remove the default state of the union and here in the about md uh, this is just a simple file uh, that says uh, basic info about me that i'm a software engineer at meta of experience in web and mobile development, product growth, cloud computing, and artificial intelligence. And then it lists what products I worked on and, and also lists my hobbies, okay? So then we're gonna ingest the document and then we'll query this document. Very similar to what I did in the previous video. However, different approach, this time with local large language model. So um, models are being copied. I have my source data, uh, not this preview. I want to do, go back to readme for one second. Uh, to, so I went through the setup, I have data set. And uh, here in the readme, you can see what types of files the private GPT supports. So you can go all the way from uh, uh, markdown and text files to CSVs or Word documents, HTML, of course, PDFs, which is pretty awesome. Uh, PowerPoint presentations and so on. So now I need to ingest the document. Uh, what this will do, it'll take my text files and will convert it to vector representation. So uh, let me copy this, go back to my console and run python ingest.py. And now it's creating embeddings using the specified embedding model and storing this into the db folder. So actually here you can see that I have a new folder and these are just uh, binary files. So there's nothing to see here, but these are my embeddings, which is a vector representation of my data. So now I can start querying my data. So I can say Python private GPT dot UI. And uh, yeah, let's see, what do I have here? So let's ask a question, who is Jacob? And let's see what, uh, what private GPT will tell me. Let's see, who is Jacob? I, I got the warnings that I requested for results, but uh, there's only one here. And this will take a while. Uh, this will take around 10 seconds because I'm using still a smaller models. And here gives me an answer, Jacob Jedrzejczyk. Eh, it's okay. Uh, let's uh, ask some, some other question. Um, what are Jacob's hobbies? This should also take around 10 seconds. And here we go. Jacob Jindrushin has a variety of interests, including sports such as soccer, martial arts. He also enjoys outdoor activities like biking, hiking, and triathlon. So this is actually pretty cool because this uh, took the power of LLM 
and apply it to to my data in this case and uh this uh, bullet point list that is here it actually took took it kind of to the next level and categorized uh, these hobbies um, and also a uh, private gpt it uh, shows here like the source document um, we actually don't need it you can um, you can comment this out so if you go here to private gpt and search for source doo -doo -doo -doo, source documents print the real one source used in the answer so i don't need it comment it out so get a better view so now um see yeah, it's it's okay uh, let me ask the third question when did jacob work on seeing ai right so here i provide the data range 2017 2019 so let's see if this model will be able to figure it out again 10 seconds and uh let's see what we get okay so here we go the context does not provide information about the exact date of when jacob worked on seeing ai <laughs> well uh actually this data is there so let's try to use a more powerful model and see if the more powerful model will be able to deduct that information from the text so i'll just kill this and I'll go back to the ENV and here I'll swap my model with uh, this one. Uh, boop. Oh, come on. Yep. Save. And let me run the private GPT now. So I, I don't have to ingest data again because creating embeddings is being taken care of by the embeddings model, which I didn't change. Here I'm only changing the LLM that will help me to take these embeddings as a context and answer questions I have for, for my data. So, okay, here you already see that this is taking a little bit more time, right? The model is uh, twice the size of the previous one. And uh, also the queries will take two times more time, uh, sometimes between 20 to, to 30 seconds. So let's see how long it will take to load it. Okay, there we go. Okay, so let's start with the same queries. Who is Jacob? And now, um, again, this will take between 10 to 30 seconds. So uh, I'm gonna like fast forward and cut this from the video. Okay, there we go. So 30 seconds, but look at this answer. Jacob is a software engineer at Meta with experience in web more development, product growth, cloud computer intelligence, Ooh, cycling, triathlons, hiking, sailing, soccer, and martial arts. Okay, sounds, sounds pretty good. Um, so now let's ask the question that the previous LLM couldn't answer for me. When did Jacob work on seeing AI? So again, this will again take 30 seconds. If I had more powerful machine or run this on GPU, um, ideally in the cloud, in parallel, multiple GPUs, I'll get answers in less than a second. However, here I'm just using my local CPU on my MacBook M1, which is actually a pretty powerful machine, but you know, uh, to work with uh, these large language models is not enough. Okay, 20 seconds and with that. According to information provided, Jacob worked on seeing AI from 2017 until 2019. And that's true. Um, so, so you've seen now, like what is the difference between more powerful and less powerful models? So the less powerful is pretty okay-ish, not great. If you use a more powerful model, you get uh, much better responses to your data. Uh, and now if you use the best model, which is the GPT-4, which unfortunately is a uh, closed source, so you cannot run it locally, you get even better answers as, as you've seen in my previous video. So the trade-off of running models locally is speed. You've seen that depending on the size of the model, when I was running it locally on my machine, it took between 10 seconds to 30 seconds to get an answer. Uh, open AI models are deployed in a cloud and run on super fast GPUs. That's how you get answers in less than a second. Uh, of course, you can deploy 
your open source models to the cloud as well and run your apps on GPUs, uh, but then you have to pay for it. The big advantage of that, however, is that you have full control of your end-to-end -end flow. If OpenAI for some reason decides to close its API or drastically increase the price, there is very little you can do about it. But running open source models in the cloud puts only one constraint on you, the cloud provider cost and potential changes to their environment. So for example, they might say that, oh, this offering like this virtual machine with GPU is no longer available, but usually they provide a path to upgrade because they want you to keep using uh, their compute. So this is not a worry, but the cost might be. However, I don't see this coming up drastically. What OpenAI will do, however, that's a very big question because they all want to start monetizing and so on. So they can actually drastically increase these prices, especially because they have the best model and people might want to pay higher price for the best. If you have any questions, please leave the comment. I would be very happy to answer them. If you made it that far, you probably found this video useful. If that's the case, please hit the like button. You can also subscribe to my channel to get notifications about the new videos.